I'll see you later, okay? Love you. I first heard about my first Velomobile when I was trying to find a way to wrap my body in some sort of shield when I was on a bicycle. And I thought of umbrellas, I thought of hokey, like, fairings. See you later. I just Googled long enough one evening and I found Velomobiles. And these things are really popular in Germany and the Netherlands. And they've been around since the early 80s. I just figured it out one night and it was just a love affair ever since. Uh, it's very comfortable. It's a recumbent position. Okay. Another huge advantage is I can dress like I am now. So I don't have to worry about the mud sign, any special cycling attire. I get my cell phone snapped in, put it on speaker, get my Bluetooth connected. I literally just put a laptop on one side, a lunch on the other, coffee mug holder, and I just go to work like I'm dressed. Works. Garage door button. There you go. All right. All right, here we go. Another gorgeous day. All right, here we go. The Velomobile helps me stay warm all year round in the winter. It's cool in the summer, it keeps the sun off your legs and your head. It's very visible. It's the most visible bike on the planet, so it's very safe in traffic. Thank you. They're so well behaved, New Jerseyans. People definitely, definitely see you and give you plenty of room and respect. A little traffic on the main street today. When I take this out in the morning rush hour, this amazing phenomena occurs where people think of me as one of them. I'm a little car. I'm a mini, mini Cooper. You know, so they respect me in a very weird way. They give me the whole lane. So I'm kind of a car because they don't know that I'm pedaling underneath. One of the biggest problems in cycling is the air. You're not in an aerodynamic shape. This is the teardrop shape, the whole body. It has the least drag coefficient of any shape under the sun. As an average cyclist, I can do 20 miles an hour to work. In this, I'm doing 28, 29, 30 with the same effort at the pedal. And that's because the wind, I cut through it like a hot knife and butter. 15% of the oil consumption that we use in our country in the category of transportation is consumed within five miles of our garage. So a lot of people are using their car to drive a block, a mile, two miles to pick up eggs and orange juice. If we can curb that appetite and just human pedal ourselves around, and I'm only talking three to five miles of your garage, you can save quite a bit of money. You could save an additional car, Look at the size, just the size difference, Justin. Look, try to pick this up like that. Now try to pick the back of the car up, watch, look. Oh, see the difference? And it's all designed to carry one person. So we got one car in the family of six, which isn't bad. Around here, people have four, pe four members of the family, and they'll have four cars, three cars. And they don't even have room in their garage for cars. There's so many cars. We treat it like a second car. That's the only way I rationalized it with my wife. I said, my first one was the toughest sell I ever had in my life. I said, I'm gonna buy this expensive thing, but think of it as a second car. It's a very good year-round alternative transportation. You got a roof, you just wanna lift the roof up like this, and that gets out of your way. And then even the seats have storage room. You lift the seat, you could put storage room in the back. I got a toolbox, I even got a pump in case I go off the road. I could put my laptop, my lunch, a small day pack in the back. You get in kind of like a kayak, you just snuggle in like this. And once you're in, you're in this very reclined position. It's a speedy lawn chair. Then this comes down, this is my steering mechanism. I have 21 speeds on these gear shifters. 
I have disc brakes here. I have turn signals. I got hazards. There's a nice high beam LED light here. The front of the Velo has another light. I got a nice bell if I'm on a cycle path. But if I'm on the road and there's a car in my way, I have an odometer, speedometer. I got mirrors, no blind spots on these, which is very safe. This canopy does come off if I choose to ride Cabriolet. And now for the cat's meow, if it's really inclement and the water and rain starts coming down, I'll pull over and I'll pull out this little bonnet. The bonnet sits right here. My body is not getting any moisture to it in the shade, obviously. If it's super cold in the morning, the bonnet goes on. So 10 degree temperatures with wind chills in the negative numbers don't affect me. It is a tricycle, two wheels up front, one wheel in the back. The nice thing about this is you never fall. Any fear you might have about slipping, you're not gonna. You're, you're just in a well-balanced machine that can handle a very tight turn without toppling over. The ultimate simplicity of putting this in reverse is sort of like the Fred Flintstone. If you ever remember Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble, look at that. How easy can it get? <laughs> I got you in one speed, so you're gonna keep at that speed. Don't change gears. It, I don't think it's about speed here. I've built up quite a reputation in terms of Velomobiles. My first one, people started seeing it. No, no, step on the seat. I started helping people import it. I was just nicely doing that for people. And then we started a little website. And then <laughs> we've sold 30 of these in the past five years. And it's kind of a hobby business. Okay, disconnect your brake. Now I'm sort of like the go-to guy in our country or North America to get these things populated and get them out in every garage if we can. There you go. Now I'm ready to go. The cost of this starts at about 8500 When you speak to a, a, an avid cyclist, they don't flinch. Ironically, when you speak to a motorist, they flinch. They're shocked. They think that's a lot of money, $9,000 for a bicycle. But then I'll show them that any car in the parking lot costs for triple of what I use to get here. Fade back, fade back, fade back. Slow down, slow down. And it's real cheap to operate. There's no insurance, no registration, no licensing, no maintenance. Whatever I eat, it converts to fuel. Their eggs give me the energy to drive through time and space. It's all because of them. Thanks, ladies. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's part of a sustainable plan. So you got the chickens, which give me the fuel to ride the bikes and keeps us off foreign oil. It's good for my health. I weigh 172 pounds. I'm very proud of that. That was my Marine Corps weight when I was 18 years old. So I'm still at my Marine Corps weight and I'm just turning 45. So I feel good. I really feel good. This is good stuff. We're, do we're experimenting here in Maywood, New Jersey. The only problem is when you go uphill in a velo, in a trike, you have to kind of drop your gears down and kind of spin. So that's kind of the only downfall on a, a three-wheel velomobile. The trick is, if you want, you can get this with a pedal assist 500 watt electric motor. And that's a phenomenon which I think is going to take the bicycle industry by storm. And just get this, on one charge I have a range of 80 miles. And the cost to fill the battery is about six cents. Yahoo! And I'm not poo-pooing cars. I'm not saying give anything up. I'm saying look at your garage as a transportation toolbox. What does this garage need to have in it for me to transport myself and my family? Need a good, efficient car. Like a bike, or two bikes, or a bicycle trailer, or maybe a tandem bike, or a skateboard, or a scooter. What I envision in the future is that the American household puts their garage on a diet. Whether it's a mile away from the home, you may want to walk. If you're going two or three miles, well, let's consider a bicycle. If you're going to commute like me, which is about 10, 15 miles round trip, year round, I definitely need a Velomobile.